Joshua and Jeremy were going on a hiking trip to Adventure Mountains. They were about to leave their room to catch their train, but there's something wrong here. Can you spot the oddity? Well, they're going hiking, but Joshua is wearing shiny business shoes. Those will be too slippery on the mountains. Once they arrived at the train station, uh -oh. Jeremy realized that he had forgotten the tickets. They went to the ticket sales booth to explain their situation. The salesman told them he might be able to give them new tickets, only if they could answer his riddle correctly. I stand tall, yet I never walk. With rocky peaks, I love to talk. Above the clouds, my head does rise. What am I that touches the skies? Can you figure out the answer? It's a mountain. During the train ride, Joshua and Jeremy were enjoying the beautiful scenery from the window. But then, suddenly, Jeremy screamed. Can you tell why? Take a look at the birds flying in the distance. Were you able to spot the small dragon flying with them? Well, Jeremy did. Joshua and Jeremy finally arrived at their destination. Before they started climbing up, they wanted to make sure their water bottles were full for the entirety of the hike. They saw three different drinking fountains from where they could fill their bottles. Take a look at them and tell me which ones they should pick. If you look closer at the first fountain, you can see a snake's tongue sticking out in the water flowing from the fountain tap. That's gross. And the second fountain's water has a slightly yellow hue. That's a no from me so they should pick the third fountain. Jeremy and Joshua were finally ready to begin their hike. There were three different hiking trails they could follow. They wanted to choose the longest trail to be able to spend more time on the mountain. Take a look at the hiking trail map. You have 10 seconds to tell me which trail is the longest. It's the second trail. During their hike, Jeremy wanted to take some photos for his social media account. So they decided to go off path deep into the forest. But suddenly, an elf stopped them and uh -oh. said, I am the guardian of this forest. I won't allow you to walk any further. Unless you know the answer to this riddle. I have cities, but no houses. Forests, but no trees. And rivers, but no water. What am I? Do you know the answer? It's a map! It became dark before Jeremy and Joshua could get back on the hiking trail. They decided to spend the night in the forest, just in case. Can you help them pick which tree they should build their tent under? Do you see the snake hole here next to the second tree? The consequences would be disastrous if they built their tent above it. And as for the third tree, there is a bee's nest on one of the branches, so it wouldn't be wise to pick that one. That's why they should pick the first tree. After completing their adventure and returning to their hotel room, Jeremy and Joshua started comparing the photos they uh -oh. had taken. But Joshua noticed that there were uh -oh. five differences in the photos they took at the same place. Take a look at them both here. Can you spot them? In the first photo, the mountaintop view is covered with snow, but that's not the case in the second photo. Secondly, the logo that Jeremy's t-shirt has in the first photo is different in the second photo. Thirdly, in the second photo, a pair of glowing eyes can be seen in between the trees, which doesn't exist in the first photo. Creepy! As for the fourth difference, 
In the first photo, Joshua is holding two of his trekking poles. But in the second photo, he's only holding one. And lastly, in the first photo, there are two cable cars riding to the top of the mountain. But in the second photo, there's only one. Aria's favorite pop star, Peyton Swiftly, was coming to town to give a concert, and Aria really wanted to go. Unfortunately, tickets were sold out very fast, and Aria couldn't uh -oh. get one. However, after one of the ticket buyers returned their ticket, the ticket website announced hey. they would give the ticket for free to the person who knew the answer to this riddle. I'm full of keys, but I can't open any locks. What am I? Uh -oh. Can you help Aria out? The answer is a piano. Elsa was working at the HR department, and she was going to interview three candidates for the company's project manager position. But as soon as uh -oh. Elsa greeted them, she noticed that one of them was not human. Can you tell who? It's the second guy. He's not blinking at all. Two pregnant ladies attended the pregnancy yoga class at the gym. But as they were preparing for the class, the yoga instructor noticed uh -oh. that one of them was actually a robot working undercover to study humans. Can you guess who? The second lady is holding an inflatable fitness ball. The weight indicated on the ball is probably just a joke because air cannot weigh that much. Meanwhile, the first lady broke the scales. She's very petite despite being pregnant. If she was a human, her weight wouldn't be able to break these scales. Brandon finally convinced his dad to give money to him to go camping with his friends with only one condition. He wanted Brandon to send him a photo from the camping trip every day. But the first day he sent him a photo, his father could tell that Brandon lied to him and he didn't go camping at all. How did he know? Brandon clearly photoshopped himself because everyone else in the photo has shadows, but Brandon doesn't. It was Annabelle's mother's birthday and she wanted to place a secret gift in her mother's office as a surprise. But when she arrived there, unfortunately, the office door was locked. But luckily, her mom was kind of forgetful, and that's why she left a note with a hint for herself. Take a look at it. Can you figure out the combination? Each number is the number of lines in the respective letter. There are three lines in the letter K. There are two lines in the letter L. There are four lines in the letter E. And there is only one line in the letter I. So, following the same logic, there are four lines in M, two lines in V, three lines in Z, and three lines in F. That makes the combination four, two, three, three. Casey wanted a new hobby for herself, so she decided to learn knitting and crocheting. She went to the crafting store to buy supplies. For her beginner's project, she needed uh -oh. to buy a green yarn, size 7 knitting needles, and a pattern book. Take a look inside the store. Can you help her find all these items? Here's the green yarn. Here are the number 7 knitting needles. And here is the pattern book. Jackson went hiking in the woods, but when his cell phone ran out of battery, he couldn't uh -oh. use his navigation and got lost. He walked for hours and started to feel exhausted and hungry. Luckily, he finally came across a farmhouse with lots of apple trees. He wanted to pick an apple and rest there while he ate it. But then, suddenly the owner of the farm stopped him and said, This is private property. You're stealing my fruits. But I'll let you eat that apple if you can answer my riddle correctly. I can fly without wings. I can cry without eyes. Wherever I go, darkness follows me. What am I?
The answer is a cloud. Are you ready to train your brain with the help of these tricky brain teasers? Then let's get started. Look at these ladies and try to figure out who's not very smart. Even though the first woman looks as if she's about to touch a hot iron, the device is actually unplugged, so she won't hurt herself. The second lady, though, is about to touch a heated waffle maker. Oh no! John's parachute hasn't opened, and he's now plunging toward the ground. Does he have higher chances of survival if he falls into a lake or on a haystack? He should try to fall on a haystack. Do you see crocodiles hiding near the shore of the lake? Uh -oh. What do you think is more dangerous in this situation? A bear or a swarm of bees? Look, the bear is about to run after its prey. It won't pay any attention to you. But bees seem to be angry. They'll most likely go after you. Look at these people. Who's most likely to survive? The man hanging over the fire? A woman tied over a barrel filled with toxic liquid? Or this guy swinging over a field of sharp needles? The woman hanging over the barrel with toxic liquid is the one who will survive. Look, there's a hole in the barrel and the liquid is leaking out of it. The woman just needs to wait until the barrel is empty and untie herself. To get out of the locked room, Jeremy had to crack this puzzle. 1 equals 5, 2 equals 15, 3 equals 215, 4 equals 3215, 4 equals 3215, 5 equals… What number is hidden under the question mark? It's 1, 5 equals 1, because 1 equals 5. But the door of the room still didn't open. Apparently, Jeremy had to solve another riddle. He had to arrange four nines in such a way that they were equal to 100. He could use any math symbols. How can the guy do it? Jeremy figured out the correct answer pretty fast. 99 plus 9 divided by 9 equals 100. You're crossing a railroad bridge when you spot a train coming toward you. The bridge is built over a lake swarming with crocodiles, so jumping into the water is out of the question. How can you survive in this situation? You're farther away from the shore you came from and won't have enough time to get back to that side. So your only option is to run toward the train really fast and turn left or right when you cross the bridge. Jack is taking part in a challenge. He's reached the final stage, which takes place in a desert. If he succeeds now, he'll win $1 million. There are four pots in front of him. In each of them, there's a key. Jack needs to get any key from any pot. but. On top of the first pot, there's a bowl filled with a strong acid. The second pot is covered with a bowl full of venomous spiders. In the bowl placed on the third pot, Jack sees a raging fire. A viper is curled up in the bowl covering the fourth pot. Uh -oh. Jack isn't allowed to drop the bowls or turn them over. Which pot should he choose? The guy should choose the third bowl. He can put the fire out with sand. He's in the desert after all. And get the key. David's company develops apps for smartphones. Right now, he's looking for a designer. He's got hundreds of resumes. 
but he's chosen just three of them. Angela's resume says, I'm 23 years old, I don't have a lot of experience, but I'm a fast learner and have already designed similar applications. Helen wrote in her resume, I'm 26 and have four years of work experience. You should hire me because I've created lots of TikTok stories that have gone viral. And Eric's resume claims he's 28 years old with seven years of work experience. He's designed tons of apps and he's been working for Google since the company was launched. David can only hire one person, but it's okay because one applicant hasn't lied in their resume. Who is it? Eric has just seven years of work experience, but Google was officially launched in 1998. There are no stories on TikTok, meaning Helen couldn't create them. David hired Angela, even though she hasn't been working for a long time. She's honest and has a nice portfolio. Three friends agreed to hang out together on Friday night. One of them, Brian, was tasked with bringing pizza. But the guy was running extremely late. His friends were starving. Strangely, Brian wasn't picking up their calls. But in an hour or so, he sent them a selfie. In the photo, he was standing next to his car. In the following message, he wrote he had run out of gas. He was at a gas station, tanking his car up. But his friends didn't believe Brian's excuses. Why? In the picture, it's clearly seen that the guy has got an electric car. It doesn't need gas. Mark told his wife he was going on a business trip to Canada and asked her to pack his bag for him. It was winter, so his wife packed a pair of very warm socks, a scarf, and a knitted hat for Mark. When Mark came back, he said that his business trip was successful. Then he asked his wife why she hadn't put his toothbrush and toothpaste in his suitcase. The woman immediately understood that her husband was lying about going on a business trip. How did she figure it out? She put his toothbrush and toothpaste under the scarf, hat, and warm socks. If he didn't take them out of his bag, it probably wasn't very cold outside, which means that, most likely, he was not in Canada. One out of nine identical balls is heavier than the others. How can you figure out which one it is after just two weighings? You need to divide all the balls into three groups and weigh two of them. That's how you can figure out which group contains the heavy ball. After that, you should pick two balls from the heaviest group. Weigh one against the other you'll understand which ball of the three is the heaviest. There was a blackout in the city, but the bus driver still noticed a dog on the road and managed to stop in time and avoid hitting the animal. How did he do this? This accident happened during the day. You have six glasses standing in a row on the table. The first three of them are filled with water, and the other three are empty. You need to move just one glass to arrange them in such a way that full and empty glasses alternate. How can you do it? Just pick up glass number two and pour the water into glass number five. You enter a room and see that there's nothing inside but a blackboard on the wall. There are four words written on it. Pin, check, boiling, view. You have to figure out a five-letter word that can be added to each of them to make an existing word or word combination. Have you realized that the necessary word is point? Then you'll get pinpoint. Checkpoint, boiling point, and viewpoint. Now, you're in a strange building that looks like a planetarium. There are photos of distant stars on the walls. In the middle, there's a screen with a riddle on it. N-E-U-S-R-N-E-R-R-S-T-H-U-S. -E -R -R -E -R -R -E -R -R -E -R question mark. 
you have to figure out what is hiding under the question mark. If you've realized that the correct answer is RY, congratulations! The list is made up of the last two letters of the names of the planets of the solar system, in the order from Neptune to Mercury, Neptune, Uranus, Saturn, Jupiter, Mars, Earth, Venus, Mercury. Two daughters and two mothers went out to a cafe. Each of them ate a slice of pizza. But strangely, only three slices were eaten. How come? These ladies are a grandmother, a mother, and a daughter. Two of them are moms, and two are daughters. So, riddle me this. Amanda loved cats very much. One day, she visited an acquaintance and met her lovely Persian cat. Amanda asked her acquaintance how old the cat was. Well, in two years, Luna will be twice as old as she was five years ago. Amanda nodded and continued petting the cat. And did you understand how old the animal was? Luna is 12 years old. That's an old kitty. Look at these three friends. They seem to have gotten into a trap. They're hanging upside down in the air with their legs tied. On the ground under the blonde girl's head, there are several venomous snakes. Under the head of the girl with red hair, a fire is burning. And on the ground, under the guy, there are a couple of scorpions. How can these guys escape? See that black cloud with lightning? It's going to start raining. The rainwater will put out the fire under the girl with red hair. And look, the girl has a knife tucked under her belt. She can cut the rope tying her legs. And when she's on the ground, she can help the other two. Hannah was running a marathon. Right before the finish line, she outran the person who was running in second place. The woman was happy she was going to win. But in a few seconds, she got very disappointed. Why? Hannah was still the second best. She was faster than the second person, not the first. Olivia was a secret agent on a mission. At one point during the mission, she had to get into a room with ancient artifacts. But to enter, she needed to choose between two doors. In front of them, there were two guards. Soon, Olivia realized that one guard always lied and the other always told the truth. One door was safe to open, and the other hit a terrible danger. The secret agent could only ask one guard one question to figure out which door she needed to go through. What question should it be? Olivia should ask, if I asked the other guard which door was safe to open, what would he say? Both guards will point at the door that hides some danger. The lying guard, because he's, well, always lying. And the guard who tells the truth, because that's what the lying guard would tell Olivia. So the woman just needs to open the other door. Liza was working as a teaching assistant at a college. One day, she had to look after a group of students who were writing an exam. Liza knew some of them were going to cheat. And indeed, soon after the exam started, the girl spotted one person who was cheating. Who is it? It's the guy in the back of the classroom. He's got the answers written on his ruler. Can you figure out which of these two watches is real and which is just a toy? The watch on the left is a toy. Look at its minute hand. It's too long and won't be able to pass all the way around the watch face. In a small village, 
There were four people who were suspected of being werewolves. One night, the village held a meeting to decide which of them was the monster. Here is what the suspects look like. This person has long, sharp fingernails and is known for being able to run extremely fast. This person has long, sharp teeth and is known for being able to see in the dark. This person has wild, unkept hair and is known for being able to jump high. And this person has a deep, growling voice and is known for being able to smell things from far away. Can you figure out which of them is the werewolf? Suspect B is the werewolf. The description of long, sharp teeth and being able to see in the dark are both typical characteristics of werewolves in mythology and folklore. While the other suspects have unusual traits as well, they are not necessarily associated with werewolves. Joe has a friend, Lucas, who never answered any questions directly. Once, Joe sent Lucas a message inviting him to join their common friends in a cafe. Lucas's answer was kind of weird. Sorry, no money, J-O-B-I-N-J-O-B. Luckily, Joe knew his friend well enough to understand what he meant. But can you figure it out? Lucas meant he had no money because he was in between jobs. <laughs> Look at this bizarre wedding. What do you think? Why are these people, who are about to get married, wearing black balaclavas? Look, there are cameras on the walls. This couple must be hiding their identities. Three friends went for a walk in a forest. People said a wizard lived there, and he wasn't a kind, friendly person. But our guys didn't believe these rumors. Everyone knows magic doesn't exist. Suddenly, a wall of fire blocked their way. Look at the things the friends have and try to figure out what they can use to put the fire out. They could use this bucket to bring some water from that puddle, but it wouldn't be enough to put out such a large fire. This hose is useless, there's nothing to attach it to. The friend should choose this spade and use soil to put the fire out. You're in a forest. Suddenly, it starts raining. You notice a cave and hide there. But as soon as you get inside, the opening behind you closes. There are three tunnels in front of you, and one of them leads to freedom. But the first tunnel is full of crocodiles that haven't eaten in two years. In the second tunnel, there is a hungry lion that hasn't had any food in two weeks. And the third tunnel leads to a scorching hot desert. Which tunnel should you choose? You should wait until the desert cools down at night and follow the third tunnel. As for crocodiles, yes, these animals can indeed live without food for up to two years. Lions can also survive for two weeks without eating anything. But before you get a chance to leave the cave, you hear some deafening noise. It's a landslide! The tunnels end up blocked, but you now see three other passages. A fire-breathing, wait, is it a dragon? is guarding the first passage. The second passage is filled with hundreds of poisonous cacti growing there. Their spines are covered with an extremely toxic substance. And in the third tunnel, you can see the red eyes of some very hungry wolves. Which tunnel can lead you to safety? You should choose the tunnel with the cacti. At least they can't move. And if you're careful, you'll be able to walk around the cacti without touching their spines. One morning, Donna came to the office and found a box of chocolates on her desk. There was also a strange note. Hmm, can you help Donna understand who presented her the sweets?
Her secret admirer is Ryan. Those are not dates. The number actually means the needed letter in the name of the month. A man told his boss, don't take your planned flight today. I had a dream last night that if you do, it might end badly. Your plane will crash. The boss fired the man. Can you figure out why? The man was a night watchman. He should have been on duty the previous night, not dreaming. Jacob and Mark decided to go on a camping trip. Look at the things they're going to take with them and say what they should leave at home. A small hint, try to think outside the box. Look, a tent, game, rice, lamp. All of these words consist of four letters. But a chair? This word has five letters. The friends should leave it at home. A man went around the world in a ship, and still he was always inside of land. How is it possible? The man was in a spaceship orbiting Earth. Hannah's birthday is on January 23rd, but she always celebrates it in the summer. Why? Hannah lives in the Southern Hemisphere. There, January is one of the hottest months of the year. Hey, nice job! Amy is an astronaut. She had spent months preparing for a space journey that would take her outside of the solar system. During the trip, she landed on another planet in an unknown galaxy. She began to explore the city and its citizens. Very soon, though, she felt the need to go to the restroom. She saw two doors leading to the ladies' and gentlemen's bathrooms and got confused. She didn't speak the local language and couldn't ask which door was for men and which was for women. Thankfully, she met a local guide, Bo, who could understand English. However, he could only speak his native language. What two questions should Amy ask to figure out the right door? She should point at one of the doors and ask, is this the woman's restroom? Then, she needs to remember Bo's reply and ask, Am I a woman? If Bo says the same word, the restroom Amy is pointing at must be for women. And if Bo says a different word, the restroom is for men. A thief wanted to rob a local bank. He came up with a brilliant plan to dress up as one of the bank's clients and try to sneak into the vault. As he was approaching the vault, he saw a security guard standing right in front of the door. The robber hadn't anticipated this, so he hid and watched the guard carefully. When one of the actual bank clients walked up to the door, the security guard said, 12, and the client said, 6, and got inside. Then another client came up to the vault. When the security guard said 6, the person answered 3 and was granted access. Oh, I've totally got this, the robber thought. He nonchalantly walked up to the security guard. When the guard said 10, the robber confidently answered 5. He was arrested immediately. Why was his answer wrong? And what should he have answered instead? The correct response depends on the number of the letters in the word. 12 has 6 letters, so the answer is 6. 6 has 3 letters, so the answer is 3. As for 10, the robber should have said 3. Dave was on his way to a football match when he got a flat tire. He stopped on the roadside to fix it, but accidentally dropped all four wheel nuts into the sewer grate. There was no way to retrieve them. Dave was beginning to suspect that he would have to spend hours there when a car passing by stopped to help him. Dave told the driver about his problem and the guy knew immediately what Dave needed to do. Dave managed to change the tire very quickly and went to the nearest service station to get his car properly fixed. 
What was the advice the guy gave Dave? That's easy. He told Dave to remove one nut from each of the other three wheels and use them to secure the new tire. Can you name one thing that all people on Earth are doing simultaneously? Getting older, duh! On a Monday morning, a big sum of money went missing from the accountant's safe. Three people were in the office at that time. Kate, the accountant, said she had left for several minutes to go to the bathroom. Walker, the IT manager, said he'd gone out for lunch and hadn't seen anything. Pete, a cleaning man, said he'd been cleaning the second floor at the time. Can you figure out who's lying? It's Walker. He said he'd been on his lunch break, but it was still morning at that time. In the afternoon, three people visited Tessa's clothing store. These three people were the only customers she had that day. The first person bought a belt and a purse. The second person bought a dress. And the third customer got a hat. One of them was a criminal, and Tessa immediately reported them to the police. Who is the criminal? And how did she know? The third person gave her a thousand dollar bill, but such bills don't exist. On Halloween, Carrie decided to visit the spookiest house in the neighborhood. As soon as she got inside, the door locked behind her back. Luckily, she saw three ways out. However, behind the first door, there was a venomous snake. Behind the second door, there was toxic gas. And the third door was hiding a large lake. Which door should she choose? The last door. It's just a lake. She can swim across it. At Los Angeles Airport, the police were looking for a man that had smuggled some goods into the country. The only detail the police knew about the man was that he had a beard. They stopped a group of people that had just arrived from different countries. The detectives noticed three bearded men and interrogated them. Tom said he'd just arrived from London. It was a business trip. The second guy, Roberto, said he'd just come from Spain to visit his girlfriend. And the third man, Pierre, said he'd come from France. He was on vacation. The detectives didn't even need to check their plane tickets to figure out who the criminal was. And what do you think? It must be Pierre. Look, the guy doesn't have any luggage with him, but he said he'd come to LA on vacation. Noah reported to the police that someone had stolen his red motorbike the previous night. It disappeared right from his garage. The police started to search for it and tracked three main suspects. Take a look at them. Which one stole Noah's motorbike? It's this guy on the right. Look closely. His motorbike is painted. But under a layer of paint, you can spot some red color. He must have stolen it and painted it a different color. But you caught him. Good job. Sandra went to the police station to report a crime. She said she was in the bathroom in the mall, reapplying her makeup when someone came up to her from behind and hit her on the head. The officer asked her if she remembered anything about the robber, but she said she hadn't seen anything since the criminal had approached her from behind. The police officer sent the woman home and refused to file the report. Why? The woman said she'd been fixing her makeup, so she had most likely been looking in the mirror. 
It means she would have seen the person approaching her from behind. She must be lying. Grace has seven sons, and each of them has a sister. How many children does Grace have in total? The answer is eight. If we consider that each son has the same sister, then it's seven sons plus one daughter, eight children in total. Anna runs a chocolate factory, and she offers all her clients a special deal. Anyone can exchange five chocolate wrappers for one chocolate bar. Robert spent two weeks collecting the wrappers and managed to find 77. Can you tell what maximum number of chocolates he can get from Anna? Robert can get a total of 19 chocolates. Here's how it works. First of all, he can exchange 77 wrappers for 15 chocolates with two wrappers left. Then, after unwrapping the new 15 chocolate bars, Robert will be able to exchange 15 wrappers for three more chocolates. Now he can use the remaining two wrappers plus the new three wrappers to get one more chocolate bar. 15 plus three plus one equals 19. Oliver was sitting at his desk, working from home, when someone hit him on the head. He was taken to the nearest hospital. Meanwhile, the police found four suspects that could have been responsible for the crime. All of them, Oliver's neighbors. Amelia said she'd been walking in the park all morning. Henry explained he'd been painting in the studio and had heard nothing. Jacob said he'd been repairing his car. Sophia answered she'd been taking a bath for the past three hours. Can you figure out who is lying? Well, take a look at these people's hands. Henry and Jacob were probably wearing gloves during their activities, which would explain why their hands are clean. But Sophia's hands are smooth and they would be all wrinkled if she had indeed spent over three hours in the water. She must be the culprit. After classes, Margot was studying in the library. At one point, she left for the bathroom. When the girl returned, she found out her wallet was gone. Margot immediately called the police. The librarian said she'd seen some guy, but she had poor eyesight and couldn't remember what he looked like. After listening to her vague description, the police officers questioned three students. Owen said he had been studying and hadn't even left his desk until the police arrived. Finn said he'd seen the girl but never really paid attention to her. He was looking for some books. Lucas said he'd been busy talking to his friend on the phone. He hadn't seen anything. Can you figure out who stole the wallet? It was Luca. He said he'd been talking on the phone, but it's prohibited in the library. If he had used his phone, he'd have been immediately kicked out. So he's lying. During a casual walk deep in the forest, Esme got lost. After hours of wandering, she saw a witch's house. Esme asked the elderly woman to show her the way back. The witch refused, but she was in a good mood and offered a deal. She gave Esme three apples. Two of them were poisoned, and one was okay to eat. The girl had to pick one apple and bite into it. If she didn't get poisoned, the witch would show her the way home. Esme was a smart girl and managed to do it. How did she know which apple to pick? In one apple, there was a worm which means it was safe to eat. A student was having an exam and he was about to fail it. The professor decided to give him one more chance and asked the last question. It was, what's my oldest daughter's name? The student was puzzled. The professor decided the question was too hard and gave the guy a hint. He wrote down three numbers, 58, 3, and 11. Can you help the student answer the question?
It's a chemistry class. The riddle must be related to the subject. Have a look at the periodic table. The 58th element is cerium, or Ce. The third element is lithium, Li. And the 11th element is sodium, or Na. If you put all of them together, you'll get the name Selena. The professor liked the game. When another student was struggling with his task, he gave him another puzzle. The man said, I have daughters. All of them, except two, have dark hair. All of them, except two, have blonde hair. And all of them, except two, have red hair. How many daughters do I have? Can you help the student out? This time, the riddle has nothing to do with chemistry. Pure logic. The professor has three daughters. One of them has dark hair, the second is blonde, and the third daughter has red hair. Ben was walking in the park at night when someone knocked him out and stole all his stuff. The guy went to the police. Three people, Cole, Jerry, and Bernard, were in the park at that time. They got arrested. The detective gave each of them a marker and asked them to write their names on the whiteboard. As soon as they finished, he immediately arrested the right person. Who was guilty, and how did the detective find it out? It was Jerry. Ben was hit from the right. It means the person who did it was left-handed. Among the three suspects, that's only Jerry. Hmm, really? Ben and Jerry? I think I need some ice cream. A member of an expedition to the South Pole found himself in a frozen cave. He didn't remember what had happened, but he knew he had to get out. The man saw three doors and a note saying what was behind each of them. Behind the first door, there was a hungry polar bear. Behind the second door, there was a room filled with poisonous gas. And behind the third, there was a room with sharp icicles falling from the ceiling every second. Which door should the man choose to survive? He should pick the first door. He's at the South Pole. There are no polar bears there. After classes, Nora stayed at the university. She needed to finish her project. She was sitting in the hallway. Soon, she got hungry. The girl went to grab some food and left all her stuff behind. When Nora returned, she checked her things and called the police. She told them what had happened and reported her wallet stolen. There were three other students nearby. All of them were questioned. Kennedy said she had been texting her friends. Ethan said, I did sit close to Nora for a while, but I didn't see or touch her wallet. Gabriella said she had been in the classroom and just walked out a couple minutes before. The detective listened to them and left without arresting anyone. Why? The detective remembered that Nora had gone to get some food. It means the wallet was with her and couldn't be stolen. The girl lied. (laughs) Three women, Sarah, Mila, and Eleanor, went shopping. Two of them are pregnant, and one is a professional watermelon thief. Yeah, I know, but just humor me. Can you tell which one stole the watermelon? It's Mila. She's wearing heels. It's not the kind of shoes pregnant women would wear. Aurora was spending her summer in the countryside. She often took long walks in the forest alone. One day, she saw a huge mansion. It was obvious no one lived there, so she entered the house. It was dusty inside, but still beautiful. Aurora took some pictures and left the place. When the girl came back home, she looked through her photos. She wanted to pick the best ones to post on her social media. But then she saw one of the photos and screamed. Take a careful look at this photo. Can you see what scared her so much? Aurora noticed she, herself, was in the photo. 
But it's impossible. She was alone in the house. Stella and Adeline were sisters. Their grandmother once presented Adeline a bracelet. But both girls loved this piece of jewelry very much. So sometimes, Stella snuck into her sister's room and borrowed the bracelet. One day, Adeline came home and noticed the bracelet was gone. She knocked on her sister's door. Stella opened the door, realized it was her sister, and shut it again. In a couple of minutes, Adeline managed to break into the room. She started searching for the bracelet. Stella told her that this time, she hadn't taken Adeline's jewelry. Adeline didn't find anything and had to leave. But on her way out, she remembered something and managed to get her bracelet back. Where was it? When Stella opened the door, she had her hair down. But later, she already had her hair tied up. In those few minutes, she made a bun and hid the bracelet in her hair. On a rainy summer night, Mrs. Miller came home after work. Her neighbor, Mrs. Smith, visited her. The women wanted to have some tea together. Mrs. Smith said her daughter was at a party. She met one of Mrs. Miller's triplet sons there. Mrs. Miller asked which one it was, but her friend didn't know. Her daughter could never tell the guys apart. The problem was all three of them were grounded and weren't allowed to go out until the next week. Mrs. Miller wanted to find out who had broken the rules. She called the boys and asked how they'd spent the day. Ian, the artist, said, In the evening, I was outside drawing. Ryan, the musician, said, I spent all day inside writing a new song. Luke, who likes sports, said, I did a workout and spent the rest of the day reading. Mrs. Miller understood which of her sons was lying and grounded him for another month. Who's the liar and how did she know? Ian lied. He said he had been drawing outside, but it was raining. Another day, another walk in the forest, and Esme got lost again. And still, she managed to find the way to the witch's house. This time, the woman had another task for Esme. The witch gave Esme a candy bar and a knife. She was going to perform seven tricks. After each of them, Esme had to give her one-seventh of the bar. But there was a catch. The knife was magical and could only make two cuts. It was also impossible to break the bar or cut it without the knife. How did Esme fulfill these conditions and return home? Esme made two cuts, dividing the bar into the following pieces, one-seventh, two-sevenths, and four-sevenths. After the first trick, she gave the witch the one-seventh piece. After the second one, the girl offered the woman the two-seventh piece and took away the one-seventh. After the third trick, she gave the witch the smallest piece back. After the fourth trick, Esme took away the first two pieces and gave the woman the four-seventh piece. Then she gave her the smallest piece again. After the sixth trick, the girl took away the one-seventh and gave the witch the two-seventh piece. And after the last trick, she gave the woman the smallest part of the bar again. Bonus question! Hey, if Esme is so smart, how come she keeps getting trapped in the forest? I have no answer. <laughs>